Welcome everybody to Ready Set Data. Uh, I'm Anthony Fortner, data engineer, and with me, my good friend Lee Markham, database administrator, database extraordinaire, <laughs> college Hello, football everyone. fan. That's right, college yeah. football fan. How are you doing, Lee? Uh, really well. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, the weekend, but but the week has been pretty good to me so far, so uh, I can't really complain. Awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm kicking tires and starting fires, so um, I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, so uh, my topic today, I see statements like relational databases continue to proliferate across various fields, and then there's a follow up with a list of areas or business fields. And I understand that that's a standard writing technique to draw readers' attention, but I feel like it leaves out important information. The fact is, SQL is everywhere. It may not be pure ANSI SQL. It could be PL SQL, T SQL. You could be using some proprietary SQL variant to interact with NoSQL database. Maybe even you're querying a system that isn't a conventional database at all, like an aggregate of a Kafka stream. What I'm trying to say is SQL is king, and it's here to stay, stay for quite some time. Is that accurate to allude to it gaining ground anymore? It's already king of the hill, and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> So I don't know if you've seen that. I mean, I see that when I was doing research for this. I kept seeing things like trying to sell people on on SQL, trying to build it up that it's taken over the world. And it's kind of kind of like Linux. It, it already is a big portion of the uh, uh, internet, right? And any web yeah. app or application, you, you can have an application that doesn't connect to the internet and it might have a SQLite database, including your phone, what, which connects to the internet, but your contacts in your phone very well might be stored in a database, and there's a good chance mm -hmm. it's using SQL to connect. So, or, yeah, so, I, or, yeah, I see those kind of posts a lot as well. I, I agree, where you know, SQL is taking over. I'm like, have you been under a rock? Like, SQL already, <laughs> SQL already took over, uh, and is, <clears throat> is central. Uh, it's you know, people will create uh, posts about you know get, how to get into data science, for example, <clears throat> and they'll list everything except SQL, or or they maybe list it, but it's kind of minimized. I'm like, where do you think your data is stored? Like it's in a database, and the mm -hmm. king language for accessing data in a database is SQL. Yes, I know there are plenty of other ways to do it. Mm -hmm. But SQL is still the standard, so agreed. Yep, it's the lingua. It's lingua franca. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And there was a coup. There was a little bit of a no SQL uh, renaissance where everyone wanted to do no SQL, which is a horrible name, but they call yeah. it no SQL. And a lot of those no SQL databases, because of what we just said and the realization that most data professionals use SQL, most developers use SQL. Um. If they're not with the database, those NoSQL databases have a way to interact with them in a SQL or SQL like SQL like yeah. interface. So it's not going anywhere. Um, yeah. So there's a few places where you can kind of, you can get started being able to play with SQL without using IDE. Um, I first example Khan Academy. Um, it give, it pairs video tutorials with interactive coding challenges. And YouTube, we'll put a link. We can put a link in. Another one is SQL View. Uh, SQL View. <laughs> That's not taken. Someone take that. Uh, SQL Zoo. It looks a little bit more like a wiki if you're a fan of wikis. Um, but you could just go through various steps, and then once you're once you clicked on one of the links and you're inside, it's interactive as well. You can run SQL and do the things it says. Mm. Um, so that's, that one's, that one's interesting. Um, did you go ahead? Yeah, I have a question. You said it's kind of a wiki based tutorial. So you get like large blocks of text, like explain what your, what different concepts are on SQL zoo. How, how does that. How yeah, does that it, it, it basically, you know, a lot of times you go into wiki, it's, a, it's a plain page and a lot of links. And when you click on a link, it brings you to an article, right? Um, in that case, it's like that. It remind me okay. of um, a notebook, in a modern term notebook, not like pieces of paper, because there's 
words, and then there's a place for you to run your SQL, right? To, right. And you can okay. and you can interact. Um, and that's what I was going for, something being interactive. Um, now, we just mentioned that one being kind of a wiki. Uh, there's – I you know, okay, before I say its name, I um, – I didn't realize the spell the way it was. I've always said Code Academy, but it looks like it's Code Academy. I yeah. noticed that. Yes, is that that is interesting. I, I okay. Know. Anyway, um, Code Academy. It's another interactive source. You can get your SQL on. You can practice. Um, it's. I've I really like this one. Um, me and a, and a handful of coworkers are actually using Code Academy for Python. Um, they learn Python, and that's been really great. Um, but they but although they have paid courses, they have free SQL courses. Um, so oh, nice. yeah, so I can I can also share that link. Somebody let me know if the, I'm hoping these actually bleed through our interface and end up being shared with everybody who's watching. Um, Somebody let me know. Um, but yeah, it's it's interactive. It happens to look nice. I know that's not everything, but when you're going to stare at something for 30 minutes and try to learn, it's really nice to have that um, because it's – I love the fact that there's stuff out there that's completely free, but because it's a site that's making money, that means they have the funds to make sure all of their stuff works well, looks good, um, and that's a big benefit in my opinion. So if you want to right, learn so, SQL and want a free source, that's another one. Um, have you used any of these? Um, I have heard of them, but I've not used any of any of the things that we're going to talk about tonight, actually. Oh, none of them. Cool. Um, yeah, that's, so that's the first couple I wanted to cover. Those are all, they're all interactive and they'll also teach you, right? Um, once you gain, once you gain a little bit more insight, you're able to just remember the keywords, your selects, your where's, your froms, um, and you want to turn up a little bit and have some fun. There are, believe it or not, SQL games out there. Um, Interesting. So, yeah, the first one, SQL Murder Mystery. Um, so basically, there's been a murder, and in order to solve who done it, you have to use SQL to get your facts and your information. So it's not this typical boring, hey, who got the most widgets done? What building uh, is doing better in sales? Which department uh -huh. uh, is the most boring? I don't know. That wouldn't actually be a SQL problem, would it? Um, it's yeah. something to work, work your way through. So it's a lot of fun. You could do that. Um, I've, I've Coworkers have mentioned this one to me before. So um, when I was – looking at options i saw this i'm like hey i know more than one person who's uh done that and liked it so i recommend it um it sounds next like, up we'll go it on it's like the get a game of clue but you have to use sequel yes i like clue um so yeah that's that's 100 percent what um you're doing you're trying to solve a mystery using sequel which is so much more fun than english right uh moving on the next one, uh, next game I mentioned is SQL Island. Um, it's nice, colorful, um, and it has little animated characters. Uh, and you're basically stranded on an island after a plane crash. And you have to use your SQL sk skills to find a way to escape the island. Um, so um, for some reason, I needed to change the language when I was there. So I don't know if that's a thing. But if you get there and through a link and... Um, when you Google it, it, it's not in your native language, then there's a way to change it. Um, hmm. But yeah, but yeah. So it's just, it, it kind of interactive works you through, works you through it and gives you problems to solve that make you feel like you're playing a game. So something to check out. I would ask if you've seen any of these, but you said you haven't, you haven't yet. So. I have not. They sound really interesting. And I, I could definitely see these as a great way to, Try something for free, like we're talking about, to see if you even like it. Um, That's so. true. The next game I have not done, and I really want to, but I keep putting it off because I want to find time. 
Um, it's called Schema Verse. You know, play on Schema. Schema Verse. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, okay. databases. It's a space space based strategy game. It's implemented entirely with a Postgres database. You use SQL statements to mine, collect money, upgrade ships using said money, um, and you try to build up your empire and in a set amount of game time. And then there's a ranking system to see who's doing good, who's doing bad. Um, oh no, who's doing good, who's doing gooder. And <laughs> it seems like it'd be I I would get behind this. Like I need a fine time to play it. Um, but it's something to do. And if you do it, holler at me. Let me know why I'm missing out. Um, yeah, it seems like a fun. I think you can actually run your own instance. You can download the database and the oh, interesting. Demon. So you could like grab a group of people, like-minded people, and have a competition. All right. So let's see here. Next up, some places to practice. So uh, more practicing. I didn't put this before the games because I thought games would be fun. Um, and then if you're going to get into something a little bit harder, here's some more resources. So W3 schools, they are full of, they're full of exercises. Um, so if you just do, you can just do a Google search, W3 schools exercises, they'll give you interactive exercises, just like I mentioned, uh, the interactive ones above, and you can strengthen your skills even more. Right. Um, yeah. Next up. Well, I have SQL. a question. Oh, yeah, do it. All right. So I actually was wrong. As I looked through this list, W3 Schools is one I've used before. Um, uh -huh. So, But it triggered a question because on W3 Schools, uh, it will it will explain a piece of syntax, and then it uh, will give you some examples. But mm -hmm. also on part of it, you can actually, like, run the SQL. Yes. And it will give you the output. Um, and then you can go off on tangent and like not yeah. do what it's saying and do some stuff, which is yeah. good practice. Yeah. So does do some of these other like the game, the gaming section that you mentioned just before this, do any of those work similarly where you like, how do you know you got the right answer? Kind oh, of it'll, thing? yeah, it, it'll tell you. So, um, for example, with the mystery, the, the murder mystery, you uh, you have to insert who you think done it into a table, murder table, something like that. I, mm, I don't remember. Okay. Called. So and then once you do, then it'll tell you if you want or not. So you have to select all the things to figure out who you think it is, and do that insert, right? And so okay. you're writing SQL and running SQL to investigate, and that's how you do you do the thing. Um, and I I haven't done SQL ver schema verse, but I assume it's similar. You 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 put things into tables like what you want things to do uh, in order to do it. And then the ticks happen and then the turns happen based on what you put in SQL and the way they interact in SQL. Okay. Of course, they even mentioned people like write Python to, to automate their SQL. But if you're automating SQL, you're just doing SQL faster, right, right. better, more so, efficiently. Apologies for making us go back to the other, the other uh, topic. Uh, but I just, I thought about that because I, I'm familiar with how W3 schools uh, work. So mm -hmm. carry on. We're talking about ways to practice. Yeah. And I didn't actually know about this one until today because um, I've been to W3 schools all the time, but it's always been kind of like Stack Overflow or, or Wikipedia where I end up there looking up something. I end up mm -hmm. there because I looked up whatever. And then now I have a little snippet and I knew it was interactive. Um, but then I found out that it literally has exercises today by accident. So I, I added this, uh, added to this. So yeah, go there and you can practice there. Another one aptly named uh, site is called sql-practice.com. Um, and then, yeah, you again, same thing. You can practice SQL without installing an IDE or setting up your own database. So you just you go there and it gives you plenty of opportunities to practice what you need to practice. Um, who knows which one of these sites will really fit with what you're trying to do, but um, yet just another resource for you to interact with. And then so I got two more. Next one up, I hear about all the time. Um, it's gamified in a way because you get a rating, and that's Hacker Rank. Um, you hear about Hacker Rank on a regular basis with all the languages. 
I was kind of excited to see that involve SQL. So you can jump on Hacker Rank and you can um, you can interact with it, do its exercises, do its little code puzzles, and then get better at SQL, but also get ranked. You So you can try to get your score up higher and get up with other people. Not in the gamified mining or way, like we talk about in games, but legitimately it gives you um, some very difficult, if you're new to if you're new to data, um, problems to solve. Um, mm. It can get very, it can get not trivial. So it'll be there at the lower levels, but you can keep working on it. You can, you'll you'll end up staying on this, trying to get that higher score, and you'll be getting better and better. Um, so that's definitely a good one. Have you been there? Uh, I've I've heard of Hacker Rank. I didn't know anything about how it works. But it's, so, are you simply just competing against your own rank? Or do you see the rank of other people who are also using Hacker Rank as a, and, and that's like supposed to motivate you to get a bigger, better score? How does it, that? Yeah, work? it can. Like me and you can um, join, and we can keep track okay. of each other and try to, you know, friendly compete. Um, and and uh, and other people, this whole universe of people hmm, trying. Interesting. It. Okay. Yeah. Um, they also do things like, um, I think companies can use them like part of the interview process of pre-interview to say, Hey, hacker rank problems to solve. And then it'll let us know, you know, compared to all the other people who work on the site, how they're doing. Right. Mm, okay. Yeah. So you all, since, since mm. lots of people using it, it can give you an idea of, you know, how they're doing. Um, okay. Oh yeah. It looks like they copied and pasted the exact number one answer that someone else has. Um, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that also makes me what you just said also makes me think about uh, a previous topic at the very beginning. Uh, this person clearly used chat GPT to generate an answer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I should plug chat GTP into hacker rank and let it play. Um, then the last one, and I, I've been in here a lot, SQL fiddle. It lets you create. It does every. It lets you run SQL. It lets you create objects. So a lot of the other examples, um, they're giving you an object to do a thing. They're giving you the object you need to do a task. Same with the games. Honestly, they're supplying you with objects in order to play the game. Mm -hmm. With SQL Fiddle, you can do a create statement in there. You can create a couple tables. Really? You can insert okay. into them, and then you can select from them. SQL Fiddle. A lot of times I've seen like people to show a concept like, okay, let me show you real quick. Clickety, 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 and then you share that with somebody. Um, but you could also just practice, and I've done that before. I've done that before because maybe I need, I'm need i working on something and I need to see it in a different syntax. On that note, not only do you create your own objects and you can interact with them, you can choose a SQL variant. For example, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, SQL Server. Um, okay. So if you're trying to learn a specific one or want to dabble, then in this one tool, you can switch around. No one picked what version of what, I'm sorry, not version, what variants of SQL you should use. Um, I think it has SQL Lite. It has a couple versions of SQL Lite in there too. So you can, you can even pick versions of the different ones. I can't remember how many SQL Server versions it has. But, you know, it, I feel like that has the most – that doesn't give you assignments to practice, but it gives you the most flexibility as far as how much you can do and what languages you can do. If it's important for, to you – we had this debate, I think, in the last stream. If it's important to you to um, not hyper-focus on one but spend some time on the other variants mm -hmm. to make sure you have you know a, a greater than 0% familiarity with them, then this will let you do that without jumping around. So for SQL Fiddle, do you go there? Let's say if I, I signed into SQL Fiddle, um, do you you go there with, uh, are, are there any instructions? Like if I go there and I want to play with Postgres, for example, does it tell me how to create a table with Postgres SQL? Like how does that work? I'm curious about this one because of what you just said. You can do, you know, several different things. Um, you can try several different relational database engines to test the waters, so to speak. And that would be a great way to 
to do that without having to set up a PostgreSQL instance, for example. 100%. So I have two answers for you. One, I'm going to be around the bush and just go back and say, you you would be learning other in, in other things before you're practicing this. So in theory, you'd learn in other places. But um, to be completely honest, to more direct to what you're asking, when you go there, there's the top bar says what variant you're using. And you go to that drop down mm -hmm. and you can go MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, if you can't tell I'm reading it. It's two Postgres, two SQLites, Microsoft SQL Server 2017. Um, and then there's also view sample fiddle. I clicked that just now to make sure I was answering your question um, as accurately as possible. And it says create table if not exist. And it creates a table, primary key. It, sets, nice. it, 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 it inserts some values in there. And then the right side of the screen, so the left side is where you build and the right side is where you query. On the right side of the screen, there's your box. You can insert your queries and it has example query because that's what view simple fiddle does. And then there's a button to run it. You can even make it full screen. So you have just a big editor. Um, mm -hmm. And in this case, it even has a little note saying we borrowed this from Stack Overflow and there's a link. So I'm going to make that go away now so I can see your face. Hey, hi. Um, but yeah, so it, it, it there's a button you can click to get an example. If you're if you're like me, <clears throat> with so many things, like you, you're just almost in your starting point. Um, if especially if you've already learned some, and you're well, again, this is the section where we're practicing. Um, mm -hmm. You push that button, it'll give you an example, and you're like, oh, okay. But that's not the table I want to make. I want to make this table, and you can just edit it. Interesting. All right. It's it's great, and then you can share it with people. So, and I think this is what I was talking about. This is the example of why I don't like CTEs and why I love CTEs. Um, <laughs> Anti-semi-join. Yeah. Here you go. All right. Cool. I like it. I liked it too. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was just a quick list of places that you can go. You can be practicing writing SQL right now without paying anybody any money, without um, downloading and installing IDEs. It's, they're all online. Um, and for free, you can be going from zero to whatever. I don't want to say zero to hero. I've overused that, but go from zero to I'm actually running queries and I'm getting results and that's fun. Um, all the way to the later practice ones where you can get into the, in the harder stuff and you still, you haven't burnt, wasted your day, burned your time installing the database of choice and the IDE and figuring out how those work. How do I connect them? Mm -hmm. Because not everyone has somebody they can call up and have help them figure that out, right? Yeah, for sure. Cool. Uh, any other thoughts on this? I don't think so. It's a good list. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. So um, I think that's it for this topic. So thanks, everybody. everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, feel free to reach out to us on um we stream live on twitch uh we also stream live on twitter and linkedin um feel free to talk to us on our discord channel if you're watching us after the fact in the youtube there should be a discord link down there um and if you're watching us live thank you so much we appreciate the people who've been talking in chat um appreciate those of you who are silently watching um feel free to join us I did that backwards. Feel free if you miss one, you can or want to see a back catalog where these end up on YouTube. And if you watch us YouTube, hey, one day, why don't you, why don't you join us live and yell at us and tell us what we're wrong about? Or don't just hang out. Be nice, people. Be nice. <laughs> um, that's all I got. That's all I got. I'm Anthony Fortner, data engineer. Lee Markham, database administrator. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. You have a good night.